Oh, man, it's my welcome back to the shop, and yeah, <laughs> exactly. My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and it feels like I haven't done one of these in ages because I've been doing a lot of pra more practical stuff because you guys kind of want that, and I've been doing other stuff and blah 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 blah. So, um, recently I was, I've done some videos and all the rest of it about brake fluid. And I said there's going to be a question, like an engineering question, on um, brakes and all the rest of it. So what we're going to do is today is we're going to talk about leverage. And I'm not I'm talking about mechanical leverage, not leverage in Mrs. Avo or Azovia in you know in concerns between pussy and uh, credit cards. Nothing to do with that. We're going to be talking about mechanical leverage, um, not emotional leverage. So <laughs> basically uh if you put a lever into Google or whatever, you'll get a picture like this, a seesaw. And in engineering we call this a fulcrum. Which is basically just our pivotal point and it doesn't move in all this. It doesn't mean that pivots can't move just as long as it doesn't move along this um, system. And basically what we do is we split these into classes. So this is what we call a class 1. Uh, lever so if you put weight or you force something like that then you are going to lift something here so we put our force in here it's also called effort and then we basically we, our input and then we've got our output which is in a sense that's our resistance this is also known as our load on this end so that's our load this is our effort as they say and our fulcrum is right in the middle. Awesome. So then what we do is we also have, because obviously we count up in you know numerical order, we have a class two, a class two lever. So an example of a class one is like a seesaw or something like that. A class two is a bit different because basically what we have is we have our beam here and then we have our fulcrum right at the end there. And basically what happens is is um, we'll, we'll lift there, we'll put a lifting force there, so you lift it up, and our load is here. Our load also moves in the same direction, so with a class one, when you push down here, you lift your load up. On this side, you have to lift your load up. Uh, you, lift, you have to lift and your load goes in the same direction. Then what we have, I'm going to have to use that dreaded black pen again, is we have a class three. A class, a class 3 lever, which is quite similar to a class 2, but it is different. So we have our fulcrum here again. The difference is, is we apply a force here, or our effort there, and we lift a load up here. So in a sense, it's a flip reverse of this. So our input is here, in there, our output is here on either side of the fulcrum for a class 1. For class 2 our input is here, our output is here on the same side going the same direction. Um, however it's our force that's on the outermost, it's the furthest away from the, the fulcrum, the pivot. On a class 3 it's flip reverse the other way around. Now where's the, um, where's the question in all this? My question to you guys is this, with a brake lever, and we might as well actually draw that, so hopefully you remember all that, because it's gone. Um, my question is, is what is a brake lever? So let's just choose, uh, not a cable type, let's choose um, the ER5 or the SV or something like that. Basically you have a brake le lever like this, lever, lever, whatever you would call it. You have a pivot pin there, like this. There's our pivot, there's our fulcrum, and then we have a plunger here. And when we pull this down, we push in here, like so, and that applies a force. What kind of class is this? Is this a class 1? Is this a class 2? Or is this a class 3? And we'll do the um, answer shortly. Hope that makes sense.
well, it shouldn't make sense. I hope the beginning bit makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.